Yo! What is up guys? Ginter here and I've got a box that I'm super excited to share with you from The Float Life. So let's go through it really quick. I ordered me some tire sealant, armadillos. I've got some float blocks in metallic red. Of course, with that tire sealant, you need to have a new tire. And in this case, this is the new 655 Enduro tire in the soft compound. And with a new tire that's a different size, you're gonna need a new hub. So here we've got the MTE, which is the more than enough five inch hub from TFL with the N48 magnets. So if you don't know, they, they sell this in three different variations. I think it's N42, N48, and N52. This is the middle one, the middle strength magnets, which is a good combination of uh, torque and speed. For me, I'm a lighter guy, so I didn't go with the N52s because I don't need that much torque, and I still wanted to go at least a little bit faster than pushback. So I went with the N48s. In any case, the tire situation. Let me, let me explain why I got this, this five inch rim. I've been wanting to get a smaller five inch maybe not five inch or even a six inch rim for a while. When the GT came out, it kind of upset a lot of people because they introduced a new sized hub. The hub was six and a half inches, whereas the XR had a six inch rim. So that meant you couldn't use the tires that you loved on your XR, but what it also did is it made the sidewall on your one wheel smaller and one wheels don't have suspension. So your sidewall, and the compound of your rubber is pretty much your suspension. Let me show you something. This is an XR tire. And you can see it's got, you know, an okay amount of sidewall. This was a six inch, a six inch hub, five inch hub. Then they went to the GT, made it a six and a half inch hub. And the sidewall got really small. But not only that, when they came out with it, they put this Cool looking shredded tire, but with a really hard compound. I can't even press it in. Like I can, but not very much. You compare that to something like, what is this? The Hoosier? I think it's the Hoosier T2. This is one of my first tires I ever bought. And with one finger, I can press it down. And same thing with this new 655 Enduro tire. With one finger, I can push it down. With this one, I cannot. So, when the GT came out, it was rough. This tire was rough, it was very hard. If you had crappy streets, if you had trails with a lot of chunk, this was very unforgiving to learn to ride on. It's perfectly fine if you have smooth ground, smooth asphalt, you stay on the sidewalks, you stay in the park where you don't deal with any kind of bumpy terrain. This tire will last you forever because it's a hard compound. Softer tires, more sidewall, is gonna give you more suspension on your one wheel. So not only is that great if you're doing drops, riding on chunky trails, but it's safer. So being able to get not only a soft compound tire, but this much sidewall means that when I ride out here in the chunky Arizona trails, if I mess up a little bit or I try to go over some really technical chunky terrain, this is gonna save my butt, literally. No joke, I have a bruise right now on my ass. That is, it's massive because I was doing underground racing and I just didn't see one little rock. I mean, it was a rock that I could easily bonk over or even de-weight over had I caught it fast enough. But because I didn't see it and it hit my tire on the edge, bucked me right off. So this is gonna be a much safer ride. Hopefully with the better magnets, I'll have a little bit more torque That'll help me on some of the uphill climbs out here. And then of course we've got these, are they float blocks? Not cold blocks. These are the float blocks. These are the ones that are designed to fit with the five inch rim. So I bought these ones in the Blem area clearance and they don't look that messed up to me. They look pretty cool. These float blocks add extra cooling with these nice fins, which of course is very welcomed out here in the Arizona heat, especially when the summer rolls around. But what they also do is they turn your axle 90 degrees. And according to everyone who's tested these out, supposedly that gives you 69% more 
more strength on your axle. So if you do drops or bonks or hit ramps or just whatever, you're falling hard on the one wheel, your axle hopefully doesn't bend. And then also in that rotational thing, what it'll do is give you a quarter of an inch more length on your motor cable plug. So if you're like me and you have aftermarket rails on your board and the plug is a little tight, or if you're like me and has a busted up motor cable that you had to jerry rig yourself to get it fixed, check out that video if you haven't seen it already. These will give you just that extra little bit of reach so that your plug isn't super tight. So I'm super pumped to get this stuff on because I feel like this is going to be much safer for me on the, ra on the trails that I'm riding on. And it couldn't have come at a better time because if you saw my previous video where I mentioned that I had a bunch of small leaks all over my performance shredded tire, L let me show you what happened after my last ride. We've got a really big leak now. Surprisingly, it's holding air. Thank you, armadillos. So I was able to ride out without any issues, but this has already been leaking now for two days, so I don't know how much longer it's gonna hold. So having new tire, new hub, new axle carriers, I'm just, I'm just pumped to get it all installed and see how it handles. All right, so I'm not gonna go through uh, the whole installation process this time, just because this is the first time I'm changing out my stator the motor and changing out the axle carriers and all that fun stuff. It's going to be a bit of work, but I'm going to get it all slapped together, hopefully in the first attempt. Then I'll go out, ride it around, maybe record a couple clips of that. And then I'll come back and tell you what I think about what it's like riding on a five inch hub along with this Enduro tire. All right. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Woo. I'm finally done installing the five inch MTE hub, the 655 Enduro tire and these float blocks. And let me tell you, I'm glad I didn't film because that was way more work than I anticipated. Thankfully I did because check out this guy. Check out my performance treaded. This is leaking. This is leaking pretty good. So I'm glad we got that swapped out. And I already turned it on to make sure it's working. Everything went well the first time, but now it's time for a real test. I'm gonna take it out around my local loop here, do some curb nudges, do a few little drops, take it on a little bit of chunky trail, and we're gonna see how she feels. All right, let's go. All right, so far so good. Let's start off with a little bit of light dirt and see how it feels. Alright. too bad for reference I'm about 145 150 pounds and I've got the tire PSI set to 11 <laughs> definitely got to get used to the little nuances as it is a different shaped tire but Man, I hit some little chunky bits there. You know what? I wonder how, I wonder how it bonks. And also, I could use a thumbnail. So let's do a let's do a quick photo slash bonk test. A little bit smaller of a rock that I'd usually bonk, but I'm still warming up to this tire. So you know we gotta start baby steps. And this is the camera that I usually use for getting my shots. I usually just put it in burst mode, have a little remote in my hand keep it really down low so you know my box look cool and uh yeah let's try and get it all right i think one of those is gonna be good and if so 
and we throw it up on the screen right now. By the way, if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I do my best to take some awesome photos. So check me out there if you want to see some more cool shots like that. All right, let's keep riding. sound that bad to be honest yeah down here went for rocks let's see if we can get some chunk Normally I would not take a line like that because oh, it's just a little risky and, and not that fun, but it's handling pretty good. Even in some of this loose sand, got a little skidded out, but it didn't completely, you know, well, didn't completely skid out for me. So yeah, this is just my initial ride in some of this dirt, some of this chunk. I'm gonna spend the next couple days really riding it, feeling it out. And yeah, like I said, I'll get back to you on any, any further findings and thoughts. All right, I'm going back to riding. This is fun. <laughs> All right, it's been almost a week of testing and the verdict is in. Big thumbs up, at least for me. Let's start with the five inch MTE hub with the N48 magnets. Do I notice the additional torque? Sort of. It might not be as noticeable to me as I am a lighter rider, but I did hit a few steep spots that I've crawled through before and it powered up without a hiccup. As for top speed though, that's where I do notice some things. Now, I'm not a speed junkie, but coming from the stock hub with the performance treaded tire, I was able to consistently hit 25 plus miles per hour on the street and it felt very stable. On this setup, I started getting speed wobbles around the 23 to 24 mile per hour mark. 
So as far as the top end speed being a few miles per hour slower, that's likely true. But in all honesty, I did manage to hit 27.5 miles per hour on a Floy sidewalk and I wasn't even trying to go fast. I think this nice big soft tire just made it feel really smooth and I didn't even realize I was going so quickly. But yeah, now on to this 655 Enduro tire in the soft compound. At first, I was worried about how it would affect my bonks because I love bonking and I thought it just might absorb it all up. But as you saw, it was no problem, even at 11 PSI. Oh boy. Things I do for views. <laughs> Let's go. Now, again, it's only been a week, so we'll see how it wears. But initially, my only complaint is the speed wobbles. I did try airing up the tire to 20 PSI for maxing out battery and range for street riding, but it got more wobbly. So I aired it back down and found that around 13 PSI was a good middle ground if I'm planning to do both streets and a little bit of trail, but I might still lower it back down even lower if I know it's gonna be a really bumpy trail. Okay, last thing, the float block axle carriers. I really can't give much feedback here as it's hard to prove its effectiveness in adding axle strength. And it's not quite the summer here yet, so it's hard to test to see if the motor will overheat, but it did give me more slack on the motor cable. And well, it looks freaking cool. And uh, the fins did feel warm when I touched them after a nice hard ride. So it is dissipating heat. Overall, I really like this whole upgrade package for the One Wheel GT. It gives me way more confidence in the ride knowing that it will absorb more of those uneven sidewalks or potholes or even the rogue rocks on the trails. And now apparently I can drop off of tables or higher so I feel like my axle won't bend or break on me. The only real con in my opinion is it is a little pricey to upgrade to a setup like this. So I would only really go in on it if you're gonna take advantage of the benefits that I explained. Again, it does in general feel like a much safer ride. So if safety is your biggest concern, this could be the upgrade for you. And I guess the only real con for, for me or maybe for you is if you have the glow job axle lights, the RGB lights that kind of slap on, on the axle, well, you can't use them anymore. So a little bummed out because you know me, I'm a LED, RGB, all the things kind of guy. I love my lights. But as you might've saw, I do have electrolytes installed now in the front and the back. So at least I got those cool RGB colors going there. Anyways, if you want to check out any of this stuff, I'll make sure and leave it down in the description. And I'll also have my TFL discount code down there if you decide to purchase it. Okay, that's Ginter for now. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and or entertaining. If you did, you know the drill, bonk that thumbs up button and do me a solid and subscribe if you enjoy all things one wheel and PEV. And if you've got any questions on this setup, feel free to leave me a comment down below. All right, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. gotta clean up this mess and figure out what to do with this guy. While I put it on the shelf with all the other tires? Yeah, let's do that.